All right, Pythagorean theorem. I'm sure you've probably heard of it before at least. At the very least, you've probably heard of it. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, my guess is you've probably used it, all right? And you might even be able to tell me. Is anybody, without looking in your uh, book or anything like that, anybody off the top of your head tell me what the Pythagorean theorem is, Amy? You got it. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll write it down here in a second. I'm going to write something else first. Um, the way I like to remember it or tell students, Pythagorean theorem is it's, it's as easy as ABC, right? That's easy, right? ABC. It's kind of like ABC, but what is it? It's a what? Squared plus B squared plus, or equals, sorry, C squared. All right, so that's the Pythagorean theorem. Let's just talk about the history of it just briefly, very, very briefly. Oops, I forgot to change my writing thing. Let's do this. You'd think after doing this day after day, class after class, I would remember, but I don't. All right, it's named after a guy. Does anybody know what the guy's name is? Is it Pythagorean? Is that his name? No, it's Pythagoras. All right, that's the guy's name, Pythagoras. All right, he lived a long time ago. He lived 570 to 495. Now, why would I write it backwards like that? 570. It's B.C. That's right. It's before what? It's before Christ. Okay, so this was almost, almost 600 years before Christ was living. And we think that when Christ was living was a long time ago. And it was. It was over 2,000 years ago, right? All right, so this is like 2,500, almost 2,600 years ago. Um, actually, yeah, it's real close to 2,600 years ago that this guy was born. All right, he died in 495, uh, so it's been a long, long time. Now, why do you think they call it the Pythagorean? Pythagorean's named after Pythagoras. Why do you think they call it the Pythagorean theorem? What do you think Pythagorean or Pythagoras did to get the name? What's that? He made it up. Is that what you said? He made the theorem. All right, he made it up. He's probably probably the one that thought of it. Would you agree? You would think, though, wouldn't you? But that's not really the case. They actually knew the Pythagorean theorem a thousand years before Pythagoras. All right? So that's over what? 3,000 years ago. All right? More than that, probably pushing 4,000 years ago, they actually knew the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is not something that's just been around a short time and just since modern civilization and all that kind of stuff. This goes way back, way, way back, all right? It's named Pythagorean Theorem because he's the first one at least credited to giving a good formal proof to the theorem, all right? He was able to say, okay, this is why it's true, all right? I've got a little proof. It's right there in my notes right there, all right? There's several different ways that you can prove it. A lot of people have proven it different ways, but Pythagoras was the guy who um, was able to do that. Pythagoras was a, he was a mathematician. I think he was a scientist. He was a philosopher. He was a teacher. You know how, um, have you watched the Chosen? Have you watched the Chosen on TV? You know, so Jesus walking around and all these other guys are kind of following him around. Would you agree? Yeah. We kind of knew that even before we watched the Chosen, right? Well, a lot of teachers, that's the kind of way people got their education way back in the day, all right? They didn't have like big buildings and schools and people would show up at eight o'clock in the morning and go to school back then. That's not the way it happened. They would either learn from their parents, they would learn from other people. Um, a lot of them just didn't have a formal education. A lot of people didn't know how to read and write and all that kind of stuff. Usually it was for the upper class, rich type people. But Pythagoras was a teacher and he actually had a group of disciples. I don't know how many there were. Okay, probably changed, but um, he would walk around and these people would follow him around and he would teach them, teach them about philosophy, teach them about the stars, teach them about all kinds of stuff. And he would teach them about math. And I'm sure, I would, I would think anyway, I don't know for 100% sure, but I would think he probably taught his students about the Pythagorean theorem. I'd, I, I looked it up to see when we started calling it the Pythagorean theorem. So I don't know if in his lifetime, they actually called it the Pythagorean theorem and he got credit for it during his lifetime. I kind of doubt it. I looked it up. I couldn't find anything one way or the other on it. But um, at least sometime after his life was over, they gave him the Pythagorean theorem. Somebody said his disciples 
were such, like sometimes these teachers were almost gods to them. Jesus was actually the one that was God, the God, the true God. Um, but uh, these disciples looked up to their teachers so much that I'm sure they probably spread the word that, hey, look, this guy Pythagoras, the guys we've been following around all the time, you know, he came up with this theorem. He didn't, well, I'm, I'm sorry, he didn't come up with the theorem. He came up with this proof for the theorem. And, um, and then the word spread, spread around the world. In fact, it wasn't, people didn't know the Pythagorean theorem just in one certain spot. I mean, it was all around the world in all these different countries. And it was very difficult. Back then, if you're in a country, you're stuck in the country. Now we could just leave, right? I could go up half an hour to Philadelphia, get on a plane, get into another country within hours, right? Back then, it wasn't like that at all, obviously. So um, it, it's incredible that people all over the world knew how to do the Pythagorean theorem. So if it's good enough for them 4,000 years ago to be able to do the Pythagorean theorem, don't you think it's good for us to know how to do it? Yes, absolutely. All right, I'll answer your question for you. So here we go. What'd you say it was? A what? Squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, all right, that's nice. It's kind of easy. It's as easy as what? ABC, right? It's as easy as ABC. It's not pi. I know, I get it. It's pi day. You made a pi joke. It's not as easy as pi. It's as easy as ABC because pi really doesn't have anything to do with this. All right? Go ahead. No That's why we call it Pi Day. No it's not like officially Pi Day. It's not. It's March 14th, which is what? 3 14. 3.14. All right. So it's not. Listen. Shh, all right. Everybody's all excited now. Listen. Guys, guys, listen. Thank you. So it's not like an official government sanctioned day. <laughs> All right, we just call it Pi Day because it's what? 314, 3 3.14, and that's Pi. Actually, I was going to put equals, but it's not equals. It's what? It's approximately equal because it doesn't stop at 4. You're going to see that in the video if you give me time to show the video, okay? So let me let me go. Why did I draw this triangle right here? Because Pythagorean theorem, which is this right here, that is the Pythagorean theorem, okay? It's basically a formula, all right? That's what the theorem is. Um, it can only be used in what kind of a triangle? A right triangle. Now, the A and the B represent something on the right triangle, and the C represents something on the, high, on the right triangle. Let's do the C first. What does the C represent? Is that the C? Is that the C? Or is that the C? Which, the hypotenuse, very good. So the hypotenuse, I'll just put it in parentheses right here. The hypotenuse is always gonna be the C, all right? How do I know that one is the hypotenuse? Why is that not the hypotenuse? Why is that not the hypotenuse? Why is that one the hypotenuse? It's not because it's not equal to the other one. So many, okay. Well, you could have all kinds of triangles where you have a largest side, but it's not the hypotenuse. So you can't just say because it's the largest one. Now, you are right that it is the largest one, but what if I had an, what if I had a, uh, an obtuse triangle? And you always have a largest side of obtuse triangle, right? All right. Is that the hypotenuse? No, it's not. Okay, why is it the hypotenuse? Because it's opposite what? The right angle. Hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So if you don't have a right angle, you don't have a what? Hypotenuse. Everybody with me on that? So this thing right here only works with what kind of triangles? Right triangles, all right? There are other things you're gonna learn, maybe in Algebra 2, maybe depends on how fast you go next year in Algebra 2, but probably for sure when you get to pre-calculus, um, you'll learn some things called the law of sines, the law of cosines, and you can actually find missing sides and missing angles if you don't have a right triangle. But this one is a right triangle. Okay, enough of that. What are the other two sides in our formula? They are the legs. Okay, they are the legs, that's true. And what letters, though, are represented in this formula? The A and the B. 
Now, it does not matter which leg is A and which one is B. It doesn't make any difference, but it absolutely makes a difference that the C is the hypotenuse, okay? Because what are you doing to the A squared and the B squared anyway? Just adding them up. So does it matter which one's A and which one's B? No, it doesn't make any difference because you add A squared plus B squared. That's the same thing as B squared plus A squared. It does not matter, all right? I'll just make this one. So this is a leg and this is another leg. We're gonna learn more about this, uh, right triangles. In fact, they have, they have entire courses that just deal with right triangles. Okay, one is called trigonometry. Have you ever heard of trigonometry? Trigonometry. Have I ever talked about that in here? I might have mentioned that. Uh, we shorten, instead of saying trigonometry every single time, what do you think we shorten it to? Just trig, right. So if I say, oh, I'm taking a trig class now, or uh, next year I gotta take trig. That's what it means, it's trigon trigonometry. And trigonometry is basically all based on, it's not just right triangles, but a huge, huge part of trig is right triangles, all right? So enough of that. What'd you come here for? You came here to learn how to use it, right? All right, so, so let's, let's do it. I'm gonna do one that's kind of a special right triangle, okay? So they all don't come out like this. This is, this is one that's kind of special, and there's a few of them. There's a handful of them. Listen, there's a handful of them, at least we're going to remember, hopefully, uh, that are special, um, and this is one of them. So what if I told you this leg was three? What if I told you this leg was four? And I need you to find the hypotenuse. We'll call it C. All right, seven? Three plus four is seven? Okay, what's the, what is it? It's A squared plus what? B squared equals what? Okay, is it 25? No, it's five. Very good, it is five. Is it just five because that's really nice that it goes three, four, five, and they're all in a row? Does that always happen? No, it really, I hate to say never, but I think it never happens except for this one where they're just all in a row, all right? I think this is the only time it happens. So, um, but let's do the math. Like you said you were doing, you did this in your head, all right? And you can, this is something you can do in your head. So what is the A? It doesn't matter if you use the four or the three, it doesn't matter. So it's three what? Squared. And then the B is what? Four, then we square it, and that equals what? C squared. Let's do this, that's nine plus 16 equals C squared. Nine plus 16 is 25. Now, does that mean C is equal to 25 like that? No, C squared is 25, so that means what number squared, what number times itself is equal to 25? Five is, right. How do I do that? I mean, I could think in my head what number times itself is 25, or that's right, I heard that. Square root, both sides. How do you get rid of something that's being added? What if I had x plus two equals three? How do I get rid of that? I subtract. What if I had um, uh, 3x equals 12? How do I get rid of the three? Divide, why? Because I'm always doing the what? The opposite. What's the opposite of squaring something? Taking the square root of something, okay? They're inverse operations of each other. Does that make sense? All right, they undo each other, some uh, authors say, all right? But if I take the square root of this side, what do I have to do? I gotta take the square root of the other side. So the square root and the square kind of cancel each other out. They undo each other, all right? Just like the minus two, the divided by three, they cancel each other out, agreed? So they cancel each other out. So what do you have? You have C equals the square root of 25. That comes out nice and even. It doesn't always come out nice and even. And in fact, it rarely comes out nice and even. But in this situation, it does. That's why I always start with this one. So what is C equal to? It's equal to five. And that's it right there, okay? Because I gotta get C by itself because the formula is C squared. All right, so I have, I, oh, it's, okay, I get, I get. so C squared is 25, not C, yeah. okay? That's why we take the square root to get rid of the square, all right? Let me throw something out. We'll keep that triangle right there and I'll just erase these. What if, and again, we'll solve for C again. Now, what we're eventually gonna do, I'll tell you what, let's put this back here. What, uh, let's do that. Let's make that X and let's say that is five. Let's do this before I go on to the next thing I was gonna talk about. Check this out. Now this time, what are you solving for? 
one of the legs, which is x, that's correct, okay, but you're solving for one of the legs. They give you the hypotenuse this time, all right? Let's go through the whole thing, but I'm going to show you that you don't have to go through the whole thing with this. If I give this to you on a quiz or a test, you should just be able to look at this and tell me what the answer is. Tell me right now. Look at it. Tell me what the what what is that answer? Four. It's four. That's right. Because we already had three, four, five, right? Agreed? Mm -hmm. So I can just look at this and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I know three, four, five, right? So if they give me any two of them, I should be able to find the third one without doing any math in my head at all. I should just be able to look at it. Well, it's always going to be the number that we didn't say. This is always going to be the C, right? And this is the A and the B. So this is either going to be 3 or 4. Well, let's say it this way. If this is 3, that has to be what? 4. If this is 4, then this one has to be what? 3. If this is 3 and this is 4, this one has to be 5. You get it? just for when it's a three, a four, and a five, okay? This is a special triangle, and we actually call it a three, four, five. Um, we could just say triangle, but we'll say right triangle, okay? That's called a three, four, five right triangle. And it's one of this. I'm going to write this word down. It's called, it, this is one of several. Oops, if I could spell right. Pythagorean, that's supposed to be Pythagorean triple. Why Pythagorean triple? Why triple? There's three. three, four, five. There's three numbers. And what's true about all three of those numbers? They're nice whole numbers. Everybody got that? They're nice whole numbers. So Pythagorean triples are three sides of a right triangle that come out to be nice whole numbers. I said earlier, this rarely happens. Okay. It rarely happens, but it does happen from time to time. And when you have a test, like when you take the, um, like any kind of achievement test or the SAT or the PSAT, you'll probably be taking the PSAT, what, this year? Are you scheduled to take it this year? Next Thursday. Oh, next Thursday? Okay. Well, so, did you say SAT or PSAT? the PSAT. Tomorrow. So you take a practice before you take the practice? Because a PSAT is a practice SAT. Okay. Anyway, when you get to it and you get to the math, I'm not saying you'll absolutely see it on there. I haven't, I haven't looked at an SAT test, an SAT in a really long time. But I do remember from way back, and I used to teach classes on SAT prep and stuff, um, knowing your Pythagorean triples, and there's more than just three, four, five. We'll get to it in a second. Knowing your Pythagorean triples will make things go so much faster. So if this was on your PSAT, you don't have to do a whole bunch of math to get to this. What could you do? You could just say X is what? Four, all right? No, not on the SAT. You just show an answer, all right? So what if I what if I told you that this was four? What is that? We'll call it y. What's that equal to? Without doing any math, what is this? It's three. That's right. Everybody see it? Okay. What if um, they didn't tell you this? What would this be? That would be five. You got it? That's a Pythagorean triple. That's one of them. There's some other ones. I'm going to write them down. We're not going to do the math on all of them, but if you wanted to, you could do the math on all of them. You ready? Here's some other ones. And this is, like, you don't absolutely 100% have to know these, but it helps you a lot because sometimes they'll give you some triangles where it is a Pythagorean triple, and if you know some of these in your head, you can just look at it and say, oh, the answer is boom. And then that saves you a lot of work. On the PSATs and the SATs, time is of the essence. All right, when you take achievement tests in school, you know the regular achievement tests you take in school, usually you finish real quick and you sit around and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. Yes? Have you ever been in that situation? On the SATs, it's completely opposite. You're like, oh crap, I only got five more minutes and I got all these problems to do. On your regular achievement test, they're so much easier than what the SAT is. All right, so you need time. You need time. So save time for problems that are harder. So know these Pythagorean triples and this might help you out. So after you take the PSAT, I want you to come back and tell me if um, you have any math problems with geometry. You'll have some geometry on there, I'm sure, and, and see if you have any right triangles and see if you can use these. I'm going to give you three more Pythagorean triples. We won't talk really much more about them. So 5, 12, 13. Um, another one is 8, 15, 17. 
and another one is 7, 24, 25. All right, so those, those are some common. I mean, there's more than this. I mean, there's probably an infinite number, right? Because you could get super gigantic numbers. But these are the most common ones right there. So we'll just stop right there. Those Pythagorean triples. So how could that be useful? Well, what if this was an SAT problem and they gave you a right triangle? Right? Again, it only works with right triangles. And what if they told you that this was 25 and this was 24 and they ask you to solve for X without doing any math at all, okay? It's seven, that's right. If you memorize this, if you memorize it, then that is seven. Now, here's how it doesn't work. Watch. Um, I'm trying to think. Of, <laughs> I was going somewhere with this and then my mind went blank. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to say what I was going to say because I got it all mixed up. But that's good enough right there. All right, so that's pretty important, Pythagorean triples. Uh, let me show you one more thing before I move on to a real example. Uh, what if I did this? Let's use this triangle right here since it's already drawn. What if that was 6? And what if that was 8? Solve for that right there. Can, can you what? Yeah, right past with very, very minimal math, you should be able to figure that one out. Now, if you wanted to, you could do what? You could go six squared plus what? Eight squared equals C squared. You could do that, but let's not do that just yet. We'll do it in a second, but just look at that right now, okay? And um, let's think. Remember, what was our first Pythagorean triple? Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. I like that sound. What does that mean? What'd you see? Exactly right. It's the same thing, but it's doubled. I like how you said that. Okay, so look. There you go. All right. Look. This almost looks like three, four, five. You're like, no, it doesn't. That doesn't look like a three. That doesn't look like a four. But there's a connection, though, between three and four. What is this? This is double three. This is what? Double, double four. So what's that going to be? Ten. Double ten. five, which is ten. ten. That's also another Pythagorean triple. Okay? Watch. Let's see if it actually works. Okay? Am I just pulling your leg or does it really work? Figuratively pulling your leg. You get the idea. So let's do this. What's that? 36 plus 64. What's that? 100, 100 is C squared. Square root both sides. What's the square root of 100? It's 10. That does work, doesn't it? Okay. So that's another one. It's not in our list of Pythagorean triples, but it's just double that one. You got it? Could you do it for anything? Yes. Let's do another one. What if... What if I said that this was 39, this was 36, what's that? She got it. Lillian got it. Look, what divides into both of these? What divides into both of these? Three. Three goes into 39 how many times? 13. 13. 3 goes into 36 how many times? 12. So if this is 12 and that's 13, what's this one? That's 5. But what did we do? We went 13 times 3. We went 12 times 3, right? So this is going to be what? 5 times 3, which is 15. Okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could have done this. Watch. We really haven't done this yet, but watch. I could have gone, listen, I could have gone x squared plus what? If I wanted to do Pythagorean theorem with this, plus 36 squared, okay, let's use the numbers that I have on here, equals what? 39 squared. Now this is going to be ugly. Why? 
I have no idea in the world what 36 squared is. So what am I going to have to do? Throw it into a calculator, right? All right. So I could do that. I could do that, work it out, and you're going to get um, 15. All right. So whatever that is. I'm not going to do the math. We're running out of time. I don't have time to show you my video today anyway. So, all right. Everybody with me on this? Okay. So let's, um, let's do something else. I almost, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do another example. Then I'm, I'm going to do example two, then I'm going to go back to example one because I think example two is more important than example one. So let's do it. But hopefully I do get to it. So let's draw a triangle. It says it's an equilateral triangle. What does that mean? All the sides are equal and all the angles are equal. Okay, so there we go. That's an equilateral triangle. They tell you this side is eight. It's in centimeters. I'm just going to put the numbers down. And that's all they tell you. That's it. And what I want to do, listen, I want to find the area. We just finished doing this, didn't we? Find the area of the triangle. It's an equilateral triangle. We'll put equilateral triangle. Okay, find the area of this equilateral triangle. That means all four of these, all three of these sides are equal to each other, correct? So how do I find the area of a triangle? What's the formula? Uh, base times height. Yeah, base times height what? Divided by two or one half what? The base times the height. Okay, all right, that's easy enough. All I got to do is know what the base is and what the height is. Well, got a little problem. <laughs> you almost do. Well, you actually do. You do know the base, don't you? What's the base of that triangle? Okay, eight. Now, you could use this as the base as well, but I'm just going to draw it like this. What's the height? Where is the height? Is the height even given to you? Is it also eight? No, it's Vertex. Yep, from the vertex, it's perpendicular to the opposite side. Everybody see that? So that red one right there, that's the what? That's the height. Problem is, I gotta find that. How in the world do I find that? They don't give it to me. Okay, that's why they put it in this lesson. Hmm, what do you think? Well, I got a right triangle though, don't I? So that's nice, because that's what this lesson's about, isn't it? Okay, half this base is what? So that means from here to here is how much? Four. Okay. Now, what do I have going for me here? Do I have enough to solve for H? Okay. So what am I going to make the A? You can make it either one. Let's make it H. Let's put that first, okay? So let's make it H. Even though it's not an A, it's fine. It's H, all right? So this is H squared plus what? Four squared, right, because we're, again, we're just dealing with this right triangle because we're trying to find the height, all right? So I'm gonna put four squared equals C squared. What's the C? That's eight, and then that's squared. Now, this is one of those ones where it doesn't come out to a nice, pretty, even number, okay, whole number, all right? Those are the Pythagorean triples. Remember, they rarely occur, rarely, all right? This is much more like a situation that would occur, okay? We got to find it. We don't know it. We got to find it. That's what we're doing right here. Okay, we're solving for H. Well, we're on our way to it. We're on our way to get H, all right? So just hang on. Let's get H by itself. Let's do some math. Well, I don't know what H squared is. I just write H squared. What's 4 squared? 16. What's 8 squared? 64, right? Everybody see that? See, this time they give us the C and we got to find one of the legs. So this is a little different. So just regular algebra, what do I do here to get H by itself first? Subtract what? 16, right. Okay, that's just basic pre-algebra. Oops, not 64. What am I doing? 16. Okay. And that's what? 48? So H squared is equal to what? 48. Does that mean the height of this is 48? Of course not, okay, because the hypotenuse has got to be the biggest side, right? But what do I do to get the, 
I square root, square root, square root, okay? So h is the square root of 48. Whoops, 48. Now, most of the time we would simplify it. I'm running a little short on time at this point, so let me just show you quickly how to simplify it. What times what is 48? Uh, cut several things. Yeah, sometimes times 49, but that's not 48. But that's not 48. 12 goes, in, well, 4 goes into it, 2 goes into it, 12 goes into it, 3 goes into it. Did you know 3 goes into it? How do you know 3 goes into that? Yeah, if you add them up, that's 12. 3 goes into 12, that means 3 goes into 48. Let me just jump to the, uh, let's jump to the conclusion here. Watch. 16 times 3 is 48. Everybody watch. Would you agree? 16 times 3, that's 48. All right, just believe me, it is. All right, in, in algebra, I think we might have talked about this. I can't remember if it was this class or my other class. But in algebra, you should have learned, maybe you didn't, but you should have learned that you can take the square root of both of these things. It's the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. What am I trying to do? All I'm trying to do is simplify that thing right there. All right, and it does simplify. They don't, not every single square root simplifies, but this one does. All right, you understand 16 times three? Why did I pick 16? Why did I put 12 times four? Because 12 times four works, okay? 12 times four is 48, I can take the square root of four, but what is the square root of 16? It's just plain old four times what? The square root of three. So that right there is my what? Is my height. Now that was a little tricky. Okay, that was a little bit tricky. The square root stuff, I get it. It's weird. You probably don't remember that. Did you ever do that in Algebra 1? It's something you probably should have done in Algebra 1, okay? But it's not uncommon, okay, to not cover it as well in Algebra 1. It usually would be probably towards the end of the year, all right? In Algebra 2, you'll definitely be doing this stuff, right? I don't want to take any more time on this because all it's doing is just simplifying. So what is the height then? What did I say it was? It's what? Four times. We say four. You could just say four square root of three. Some people say four root three instead of square root, just to make it a little shorter. Um, I like to say four times the square root of three. It's a little more words, but it makes sense. It's four times the square root of three. Everybody got it? Is that my answer? No. Nope. What do they ask for? Find the area. Okay. So now I'm actually good. Now I know the base of the triangle. Now I know the height of the triangle. Now I can find the area of the triangle. So let's look at this crazy answer. So what is it? It's one half the base times the height. Or let's just put it over two, right? Let's put base times height over two. So what is the base of this triangle? It's eight, right? It's the whole thing. A lot of people get confused and say, oh, we use that to be four, but that was the base of the right triangle. What's the base of the whole entire triangle? It's eight, all right? Times, I'll put a dot times what? The height. What's the height? 4 square root of 3. Over what? Because it's a triangle, it's over 2. Let's simplify it a little bit further. You could go 8 times 4. 8 times 4 is what? 32 divided by 2 is 16. Or you could do this. 2 goes into, I don't know, let's do this one. 2 goes into 8 what? 4 times, 4 times 4 is 16. So either way, you get a 16. That right there is the way that most math teachers would want you to write your answer. You could write it as a decimal. How would I write this as a decimal? You wouldn't really do it in your head. What would you use? Use calculator. That's right. Okay, so use a calculator if you wanted to. So I'm going to put an or. You could put into a calculator. Tristan, what'd you get? You did? 16 times the square root of 3? Try it again. Here, let's do this. Come on. They won't be able to see this on YouTube, but that's okay. Yes, 27.7, that's correct. So I'll just show you. Let's move this over. What is it, 16 times the square root of three? So watch, this calculator, I'd go 16, and then hit the square root button, which means I gotta hit the second. See, there's the square root, there's three. Could close parentheses, you don't have to. Hit enter, there it is, 27.7, okay? 
All right, let's get rid of that. All right. So you could put 27.7. Uh, would I say this was in centimeters? So technically, even though it's a weird number like that, we would put centimeters what? Squared. Centimeters squared. This is an exact answer. Okay? This is a what? Squiggle, squiggle. This would be what? Approximate. Okay? This is approximately because this is called a irrational number when you have a square root with a number inside of it that doesn't come out to a nice perfect even number. We call that an irrational number, which means the decimal keeps on going forever and ever, kind of like pi. All right? Pi is an irrational number. It keeps on going. The decimal keeps on going forever and ever. So that is approximate answer. This is an exact answer. So you may be taking a test somewhere. I don't know if they do this or not. I'm just thinking that maybe they do. Sometimes they might say, give me ex an exact answer or write it as an approximation, right? Or they might not say anything. And if they don't say anything, you could put either one of those. Everybody got it? Okay. Um, this possibly could be, yes. All right. Now, I know this square root thing is a really the part that bugs you. But if you wanted to, you could just keep this the square root of 48, all right, and not simplify it, and then stick it in here, stick it into a calculator, and then you're good to go, all right? I'm just showing you this because when you get into an algebra class, they're gonna make you simplify those square roots. So if you got this thing and wrote square root of 48, and didn't do all this mess right here to get four squared to three, your teacher would mark it wrong and say simplify. All right? Just like if you did a, if, let's say you did a fraction problem, you came out to two fourths and you circled it. Would any math teacher give you credit for that? No. They'd mark it wrong and they'd say what? Re what? Reduce or simplify, right? What's your answer? It's one half. That's your answer right there. Even though technically that's the same number, right? Math teachers want you to reduce it. All right? We're just trying to get you to learn. That's why math teachers would mark that wrong, because they're trying to force you to learn how to reduce stuff. All right? I'm going to completely skip example one. I really wanted to get to it, but I think I did enough algebra there. There's some algebra on example one that I think is kind of tough. Let's do this really quick. All right? I'm going to write the Pythagorean theorem a little differently. I'm going to write it like this. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, I just stuck the C on the left-hand side and the A and the B on the right-hand side. Now, if I gave you a set of three numbers, all right, and I asked you, tell me if that's a right triangle or not, what would you do? You'd take those three numbers and you'd put them into this. But you would put the biggest number in for C. Make sense? Because that's always the hypotenuse, okay? So anytime this works out, you would get a right triangle. Now watch this. Careful, I only got like two minutes left, maybe a minute, so watch. What if I took the three sides that I gave you, I take the longest side and I squared it, and I take the other two sides, I squared them and add them up, but the C squared didn't come out equal to the A squared plus B squared. Let's say it came out greater, just hang on. One more thing after this. What if it came out greater than this? Then this would be an obtuse triangle. And that's kind of interesting. You can put the numbers in, and you can say for sure that that's going to be obtuse. Take a wild guess what the third thing is. If C squared was what? Less than A squared plus B squared. I heard it. Somebody say it. It would be an acute triangle. So if they give you three sides, right, you plug them in, and if it's equal, it's a right triangle. If C squared is greater, it's obtuse. If C squared is less, then it's acute. All right? So... Let's do some problems. Let's do um, 1 to 10, 13 to 19. 1 to 10, 13 to 19. What's today, Thursday? Yeah, we, we do have a quiz. This is 7-3. The quiz is on 7-1. All right, so the quiz, 7-1-7-2. All right, the quiz is on 7-1 and 7-2. All right, tomorrow. All right, this is your homework right here, section 7-3. That's your homework. 
There you go. I will do this tomorrow. Listen to me. I will do this. I'm going to take about maybe 10 minutes and we'll go over some questions you might have on 7172. The stuff we did today is not going to be on the quiz because stuff today is 7-3. Okay? So we'll take five to 10 minutes tomorrow to review it and we'll take the quiz tomorrow. But you go over it tonight. Okay? Look at the YouTube videos on 7-1 and 7-2 so that you can familiarize yourself with it. All right. Have a good one.